Right, good evening. Thank you all for coming. Uh, tonight's event is a real opportunity, I think, because we've got all the student political leaders in Durham, and I don't think it's happened before. So on my left, we have Hugo Lunn, Chancellor of the Durham Free Market Association. We have Ben Cooper, President of the Durham University Conservative Association. We have Joe Darrenball Hornby, Co-Chair of the D Durham University Labour Club. We have Felicity McCaw, President of the Durham Liberal Association. And we have Joe Chandler, President of Durham Young Greens. Now, the format for tonight's event will try and follow the real deal as faithfully as possible. I'll be your pound shop David Dimbleby without the glamour or elegance. Um, you can think of the bubble who are filming tonight's event and who also help funding it as Durham's answer to the BBC. Um, in the light manner, we will at the end pick your pockets for a pound if that's okay. Um, and finally, and most importantly, is how we're going to structure this, which is questions with people which you've all sent in beforehand. Um, and then we'll get the panellists to answer. And if, most importantly as well, if you want to make a point or challenge our panellists, raise your hand and I'll try and get to you mid-question. So, first question, which is very relevant for us, is what is your reaction to the university strikes? And we'll start with Hugo. Well, uh, as a pre marketeer I suppose it is uh, would be good to say, uh, excuse my English, first of all, uh, that between an employer and an employee, there is constant negotiation. If, according to law and under the contract signed by both parties, uh, one of the side is still, uh, did, uh, still uh, un unconvinced by, by the work and the uh, pay that they receive, one, one side or the other, uh, and if a strike is legal, and in the UK it is, well, that is good that um, there is a uh, right to strike cannot be taken away, like the employees are different question, but still, I have no problem between a highly qualified, uh, highly qualified uh, professional like a lecturer to strike, especially since a lecturer is, uh, is in a position to strike, as lecturers are not easily uh, swapped out, so to speak. Um, therefore, what is, what is my reaction, perhaps, to the strike? But, uh, I am mildly supportive if conditions are not as uh, lecturers would like to, uh, try and they should negotiate. I view strikes as negotiation, not necessarily as this boycott and uh, violent uh, opposition. It depends, of course, how the strike is, is played out, but I don't think lecturers are out to block roads of anything. Therefore, I am not negatively, uh, in, I'm not negatively inclined towards the, the strike itself. I don't know the details, of course, uh, of why the strike is, has been carried out. You would have to excuse my... Uh, well, the University of the Col and Co University of College and College Union have said that they're striking because of they will think they think they're going to be ten thousand pounds worth off. Joe, do you think this is justified? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the UCU striked um, with majority turnout, and eighty-eight percent of their workers voted to strike. It's happening in sixty-one universities. Um, I think lecturers are going to lose up to two hundred thousand pounds in their pensions. Um, I don't understand why universities aren't doing more to negotiate this. Our current vice chancellor is paid two hundred eighty-seven thousand pounds a year. It's not as if you know universities aren't afraid to pay big um, pay packages. Um, yeah, so absolutely support the strike. I encourage everyone to either sort of support your lecturers on the picket line, or at the very least, don't cross the picket lines. We have to stand in solidarity. There's a wider point about this. The university pays its senior staff huge amounts of money. Students are struggling to get by. Uh, st some university staff aren't paid the living wage. Bar staff aren't even paid the minimum wage sometimes. Cost of living is through the roof. And they're trying to slash our lecturers' pay. So absolutely support the strike. Felicity. Would you agree with this, Felicity? Um, I do support their right to strike. And obviously, I haven't been in those negotiating rooms where they have been. I don't know why they feel their position with the management is untenable. But I do think there's a broader point. If they said lecturers could lose up to £9,000 a year from their pension, adding up to £200,000, which means that they're expecting people to be retired for 22 years. And I think this is a broader problem we're seeing across lots of sectors of as people are living longer, these pensions that were previously possible and it is a reasonably generous pension settlement from what I can see. It's not a final salary pension but it's worked out I, 
it's not that it's like one fifty seventh of every year you've worked, that salary goes into a potential for your pension. It is reasonably generous within within the boards of what a pension is nowadays, especially after the financial crash and with private sector pensions for most workers actually being reasonably low now. Um, if people are going to be retired for 22 years, I do understand why pensions are going to have to fall. I completely, though, understand if you're a lecturer in your late 50s and you've been planning for your retirement based upon a certain settlement, it is very difficult for you to change those plans in short term. I think it should probably be radiated for lecturers within different age groups. Lecturers on Avid, of course. I didn't hear you, but... I'm sure it was great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, law doesn't work backwards, so if a contract was signed by two parties, it has to be carried out by two parties. But there's a £5 million pound shortfall, is a problem which. That's that, the problem yeah. of state pensions. It's not a state pension, state from what pensions. I can see. But, but yeah. Pensions in general. Yes, perhaps. Yes. I, think well, the, I think the problem, like, what's actually at the heart of this issue, isn't really necessarily the details of how much people are being paid, it's the fact that our educators perhaps aren't feeling that they're valued enough. You know, it's the that the atmosphere that is surrounding this discussion and I think that's actually what's at the heart of the problem we need to make sure that we're really valuing and giving you know whether it's monetary or not just offering you know real status to our educators because I think in the UK that's something which we don't do as well as lots of other countries and that could really benefit our system. A lot of uh, student union of presidents have said that they are, they're sort of, they've given ambivalent reactions to this because they say they're concerned about students and their loss of lectures. What would you say to them? I think, obviously, in the short term, it does seem disruptive and a bit frustrating, but I think you have to look at the bigger picture. You know, I think it's much more important that our lecturers feel that they're being valued. Ben? I'd like to start by agreeing with Felicity on their first point. It is important that we support the right to strike, it's a fundamental part of our democracy. It's it's the best way, well, it's not the best way, it's one of the ways in which workers can stand up and protest against injustices if they come from the government or if they come from employees. But I think it's important to step back and look that DU lecturers can earn up to £62,000 a year. That's three times, nearly three times the national average, easily double that of a nurse, and they're complaining they're not getting a good enough deal. That the uh, strike's coming around on the count that the pension fund is, is more than Five million. It's seven and a half billion pounds in deficit. So the question is, who pays for that accounting deficit? Is it students through higher tuition fees and less resources? Is it taxpayers through more borrowing or less public services? Or is it well-off lecturers on 50, 60, 50 or sixty thousand pounds a year who take a cut in their pension? I think as a question of fairness, who takes the burden of the mistake? I think lecturers are pretty well up there. On the question of fairness, I absolutely agree that nurses should be paid a lot more. And the fact that university lecturers are paid three times more than nurses in this country, and the nurses going to food banks, is a disgrace. And if you want to talk about fairness, why not target the vice-chancellors, who, who's paid £287,000 a year, rather than our lecturers and tutors? But Joe, what about this specific, the £17.5 billion deficit that Ben mentioned? Well, who, who created the deficit? I mean, the deficit is not the fault of the lecturers. The lecturers are always going to fight their corner. And if they've been offered these terms, then those terms should be met. And it's not for their employees to turn around. And as we say, a lecturers in their 50s who are planning their retirement just doesn't find it cut. I can easily join with Joe in attacking vice chancellor play. It is abominable that vice chancellor in, uh, in, in this university and across the country earn more than the Prime Minister and more than the Chiefs of Defence staff for running an organisation of a couple of thousand people and students who are on here for 39 weeks a year. That's easy to agree with. But on a, on a, on a larger point, this is a strike, well, all strikes are disruptive, but at this time of the year, through February into March, that's an important time for second years, an important time for Durham finalists going through a dissertation. And I think that if even just one student suffers anxiety or who doesn't reach their full potential as a result of the strike, then simply it's unacceptable.